I like how they're humoring their Close brother. Trial. That's so depressing. A kid can't do shit. Let's time to do the cluster of trials. How annoying will it be this week? Pretty annoying. All right, guardians, at attention. We are ready. All right, let's do it. So today we have lightning puzzles. I'm not ready for lightning puzzles, guys. I'm not. So, the Jose Temple puzzle, or whatever you want to call it, it's okay. Those fears mean nothing to us now. So this puzzle involves getting the, um, the insignia of Yevon to, uh, pretty much appear. There are many ways we, there's a few things we have to do to get it to, like, super work. So, KZ can remember how the hell the hell this puzzle works, which I don't. Uh, I, I have a gist of everything that needs to be done, but I do not remember in, like, what order and how it's supposed to happen, so... You're gonna have to... You're gonna have to forgive me here. I do remember something about, like, making a circuit here, I believe. Then I believe we move this below it. There we go, we just supercharged the sphere. Hmm. There we go. Ah, Casey remembers now at this point. Yeah, I should pull up my guide for this, because I do have the strategy guide for the original game. There's not too many differences to, in terms of enemies until you reach, like, specific, like, new areas. Or, like, new international version specific stuff, so... Really should have it out for certain stuff. But for this, I kind of know what I'm doing. At this point, you're going to want to have two spheres here. Two Jose spheres. You're also gonna wanna not fuck up pushing the Alright. Okay. Okay, come on. There you go. So because you have both spheres on this platform. It helps bind the electricity or something, and it lets it float. The important thing here is that you can, uh, I believe you can jump across it. I believe that's... Yeah, there we go. Though the jumping physics are a little awkward with it. But you do that, you push it, activates the most important circuit. Just like that, you're done. But then you're like, oh no, what about the, what about the platform? But you simply hit that thing platform goes back to its original position. Now the last thing we need to do is pretty much activate the last two sections here, which uh, uh, mean bringing these uh, spheres all the way to the back. And pretty much putting them right where you found them. Doesn't matter what you do to the uh, supercharged Jose sphere, because that's only used to pretty much charge it with glyph sphere energy, pretty much. And it's only to just open that door over there. So, this puzzle can actually be kind of difficult if you don't know what you're doing, but once you do, you can activate everything and go like, Who, look at me! I know how to make everything light up. Now at this point you go, oh man, I activated the platform, but to keen eyes you may find something different. Head over here and touch this glyph. 
And to those who are good at finding things, you will find glory. And the Destruction Sphere. And as far as I know, you gotta take the Destruction Sphere with us. Let's head to the second level of the puzzle. In which... We have to head over here to get our prize. So, you ready for the most straightforward part of the puzzle? Uh, they kind of add a twist to actually make this part difficult, because you do come back into these temples in 10 2. So, they kind of make them a little bit more annoying in those. I believe they introduce a thing like, I think you fight fiends. And, there's a, and only one of these needs to be pushed, and it's like, if you don't pick the right one, you fight in battles. But should you activate all these, shoot a geyser of electricity, which, which effectively charges that pedestal up, but also opens the door to the end. Now at this point you can say, hey, I'm done. I've done what I need to do, but we need to get the destruction sphere, so we're not going to head to the staircase. Alright, come on. So if we hit that destruction sphere right on the pedestal, it creates one last circuit, and we've completed the cloister. We're all done. Pick up a magic sphere. Now, uh... Let's, for example, go and, say, give that to Yuna, because she has an empty spot. And it turns something into a magic node. So this will give her a magic plus four. I'm really making Yuna so much better than Lulu, and it's kind of depressing me. She has seven more points in magic now. She's gonna do like thousands, like over a thousand damage with fire and stuff. It's great. But with that, we're done, so let's go pick up our third Aeon. Whoop whoop! You again. Still traveling with quite the crowd, I see. What is it, Bartello? You know this riffraff? You are. Are it, no? What of it? Can I shake your hand? Aren't. No. Sir Aren't. You're the reason I became a guardian. <laughs> Thank you, sir. This means so much to me. Calling the personal guardian the Lord Braska Riffraff? And you call yourself a summoner? Yeesh. Bartello, enough! Get back here. Hang in there, buddy. Eh? <laughs> you owe much to your father. All these guardians. And Sir Oren, too? And I hear Maester Seymour is quite taken with you. The world must look different when you're the daughter of Lord Braska. This has nothing to do with my father. I am traveling on my own, as a full-fledged summoner. Oh, is that so? Then try standing on your own two legs for once. Your guardians won't be able to protect you when the time comes. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, there's Ixion. Let's go. I like Ixion because he's a lightning unicorn, which therefore makes him one of the best Aeons ever. 
All of the Aeon designs in this game are good, though. There's one where I'm like, no. Huh. You have any weapons you're selling? Ooh, you have a fencing sabre. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, hyperball. Hmm, that might that'd be interesting. Uh, I wish there was one. There's one specific ball though I'm looking for. Doesn't look like you have it. I believe it's called TKO. So I believe uh, it's rare. Uh, let's see. What else are we looking for? This is better than what Lulu has. You have a piercing plus 10%. Shit. <laughs> uh, we don't have to deal with stone proof anymore. I'm gonna keep red armor. Red armlet's surprisingly useful. Um. Hmm. I believe that's all I want. But I can sell some stuff for a nightmare. Sleep strike? Eh, nah. A lot of these weapons I don't need. And I'd like to get more money, you know. Poison ward? Nope. Lightning strike? Nah. Stone ward? Nah. Stone ward? No. Yeah, not feeling most of the things they have that I have here. Picked up a lot of items thanks to, uh, thanks to doing multiple battles earlier in the, in that Mushroom Rock Road area, or the Jose High Road. Got quite a bit of stuff, almost at 30,000 gil. Let's pick up, uh, Switch Hater. That's, that's Waka. That is much better. More strength. Yeah. Anyway, with that done, we can actually move on. Let's, uh, let's Shimon. Donna has left. Isaru, too. Thank you. Get ready for the journey ahead. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> I love doing that. We're leaving once Yuna gets here. No matter how dark the night, morning always comes. And our journey begins anew. What do you write? Fucking poem books? You nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Let's go find Uni. And I should also open up my strategy guide. Because I feel like perusing it. She was working until dawn. Healing the wounded. Sending the fallen. Okay. I guess I'll just let her sleep for now then. <sighs> ah. Morning. What? Morning? Don't worry. But it's morning. I'm so sorry. I'll get ready right away. Just a moment. Oh, oh. Don't worry. It's okay. No, oh, sleepy head. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Really, there's no rush here. Your hair. <laughs> A summoner with bad hair. What's the world coming to? You could have woken me up. Uh, we called to you, but with all that snoring. Uh, oh. mm. What is it today? Everyone's picking on me. <laughs> oh, you too, Sir Orin? Once Lady Yuna fixes her hair, we leave. <laughs> I hadn't really laughed like that in a long time. 
It was only later that I realized. The only one really laughing then was me. Laughing must have been the only thing keeping them going. Well, it's time to go. Onward! I'm gonna beat ya. Off so early? Lady Yuna, you must be exhausted after working so hard last night. Will you be okay? <laughs> I feel that I have rested enough, but thank you for your kindness. Will you be leaving too? Yes. First we cross the moon flow, and then we head north in search of chocobos to replace those we have lost. Once we find chocobos, our mounted forces will ride again. Huh? Aren't you missing someone? Captain! Wait for me! What took you so long? We're leaving. <sighs> you expect me to keep up with a chocobo? Lady Yuna, I wish you good fortune. Elma, Clasco, let's go. Ma'am. Hey, can I just rest a sec? No complaints. What a bunch of shits. Where to next? We cross the Moonflow. Gotcha! Moonflow, baby, here we come! Well, let's go. That would have been a great way to start, right? Huh. Unfortunately, it looks like I just missed getting the TKO weapon. I'm looking through this guide, and fortunately, it says that I'm supposed to be getting it, um, earlier. I'm supposed to get it at the Operation Meehan HQ. HQ. Unfortunate. Uh, I'll explain a little bit about what it does and why it's one of Waka's most overpowered weapons in the game. It has a stone touch to it, so there's a random chance that it'll turn the enemy to stone that it hits. And if that uh, doesn't already sound appealing, what makes it great is the fact that since it's a physical attack, once Waka successfully hits something with stoned effect, it immediately shatters. Meaning he has the ability for most enemies in the game who are not immune to it, he can just insta-kill them. Which makes him have one of the best weapons ever, and it's hilarious. It makes the areas up here complete, a complete, like, non-challenge. Ah, I love the colors here. It's been a while since we've see, seen so much green. Yes, I'm completely ignoring her again. <laughs> Watch other LPs if you want to hear Shalinda speak. You gotta love how much health Orin just stacks up. He gets so much more than the other characters for a good while in the game. Hey look, it's those Ronso buttheads. I'll talk to them after about six or seven random battles. Nice! That's why I got the accuracy sphere earlier. <laughs> That's how it's done. My pearl bangle. What does that do? 
Magic defense, don't care. <laughs> oh no, he's so confused. Look! One of Kimari's friends looks just like him. What? Both follow summoners on all fours. Hornless goatlings. Hornless! Hornless! <laughs> you come to win some Kimari. Wrong. We come to warn little Kimari. Summoners disappear. Never return. Next will be Kimari's summoner. Poor Kimari lost his horn. Next lose his summoner. Pitiful Kimari, howl alone, howl alone. <laughs> Do those two uh, got something against you? What? They were just picking on you? Kimari will deal with them. And I'll help. Kimari alone. But, uh... It's Kimari's problem. You can't interfere. It's a rule. I'm worried. Let the Ronso deal with Ronso problems, yeah? That's how it's always been. I mean, I'm worried about those summoners disappearing. They aren't just disappearing into thin air. Hey, if we Guardians do our job, no problem, right? Oh. Confident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>